Hi everyone, welcome to the Triessence Martial Art Channel. Firstly, I hope everyone is still all healthy and well, and you know, keep your social distance and stay safe during this crisis. Now, today will be our second episode on fact or fiction, where we discuss popular myths, story, legend, or just claims of various martial art, Chinese martial art events or historical happenings. Today's topic is perhaps one of the most heated debate within the Chinese martial art community in China. The topic is the origin of Tai Chi, i.e. who invented Tai Chi. Now the reason this is the most heated debate within the Chinese martial art community in China is because Tai Chi has, is one of, is, has the most practitioner base in the entire world for northern martial art. Now I don't know how you know how Tai Chi fares against Wing Chun, Twilight Fat and Honga because I know those three styles have a lot of uh, you know practitioner base especially in the West. But for all the northern Chinese martial arts, Tai Chi hands down has the most practitioner. What that means is it also has the most money, alright? And therefore, throughout the years, various entities for their own self gain and profit making has made claims to be the origin of the, you know, the, the, the home, the birthplace of Tai Chi. And personally, I have no beef in this argument because I don't think it's very important to know who invented Tai Chi. You know, for all I care, it could be the Martian that invented Tai Chi, but if you can't do it properly, if you don't have the skills, the ability, the understanding, the internal structure and power, it means nothing. So I personally don't give a flying donkey about who invented Tai Chi. However, I personally dislike people and entities who spin lies and deceits and false information in order to, you know, to get more personal gain. Which is why I did spend time looking up on all these various claims and research a bit on my own to see whose claim is legit and whose is not. And this is why I thought this would be a very important topic to cover following our first episode, which was on the rising of the invincible Yang. Right? We're gonna probably have the next few episodes all focusing on Tai Chi first. Now we're gonna talk about who invented Tai Chi. We need to realize that this is a very complex topic, which is why one video will not be able to cover it all. And in the past, although sometimes I do release two part and three part videos, I usually release them all in one go. Because I know I personally don't like it when I have to watch half a content, not get a conclusion, and wait for a week or two to watch the other half, right? I personally don't like that. So I like to release content you know, a singular focus content in one go. However, this will be not possible for this topic because it is quite a broad topic. It will probably result in more than three or four parts, which is why I'm going to have to do them in small installments. The good thing, however, is that each part will be more or less standalone, examining one claim, how viable or unlikely that claim is true. Uh, so therefore, I think, um, Watching one part a week or you know one part in two weeks depending on my schedule would not be that much of an issue in terms of continuity on the content. And in order to have a better understanding on this topic, especially for those of you, you know, I assume most of you who watch my channel don't speak Chinese and don't read Chinese, and therefore lacks um you know a detailed understanding to the Chinese martial art history. Uh, therefore I think it's important to first set a baseline of events, right? The events that we know for certain did happen. And based on those baseline events, we are going to examine the credibility of each claim. Now just, you know, for those of you who don't know much about the current Tai Chi world, so basically there are a few big powerhouses. For example, the Chen family, right? The Chen village, they were the first I think it's happened in the 60s or 70s, they're the first out of the new China, right, to claim that they are the birthing place of Tai Chi. And through that and other government promotions and propaganda, they have gained 
a huge following around the world. And its head of the village, Chen Xiaobang, has made a killing of profit. Not all thanks to it being the birthplace, but largely contributed by the fact that a lot of people think Chen Village is the birthing place of Taiji and therefore the most authentic and therefore if you want to do Taiji, they want to do Chen Taiji from the Chen Village, right? So he benefits a lot. He's making, I think last time someone told me he's making like six million dollars a year from from teaching around the world. Now don't quote me on that and I don't know him personally, but I did hear someone told me that he heard it directly from him. Either way, that's kind of money you are looking at, and that's only him, right? There are other people in the Chen Village who's also making money. So in, so overall, that entity, the Chen Village, they're making a huge amount of profit. The next huge entity is Wudang, Wudang Mountain, right? They also now claim that Taiji is from there, and if you go to the Wudang Mountain, you will see the big sign that says the birthing place of Taiji. And I don't know how much they make, but it's definitely a lot. You know, maybe similar to Chen Xiaobang, maybe even more. I don't know. There's a lot of money going on over there. And funny enough, in recent years, or maybe six, seven years ago, I can't remember exactly, uh, a small county, you know, like a small town in Fujian province, suddenly claimed that, you know what, we have found evidence that Zhang Sanfeng actually was born in Nao County. And therefore, we are the real birthing place of Tai Chi. That town has never ever had Taiji in a large scale in the past. But all, all of a sudden, you know, right after the government, the local government declared that, all of a sudden they're doing like, you know, international Taiji festival, Taiji competition, Taiji cultural day, and all of a sudden a huge amount of its population in the county, in a small town, they're starting to do Taiji and, and claim that they have a, a lineage to the most original version of Taiji. So you can see how much money and profit people stand to gain from claiming such things and that's why everyone's arguing over there right this is like a, a huge juicy piece of meat that a lot of people want to take a bite on and there are a few others uh, as well that we're gonna go through during the course of this mini series on the origin of taiji so so as i was saying we need to set a baseline on events that we know that did happen now i brought up a whiteboard because you know it is quite Complex for those who are not familiar with the history of it. So I think it will be easier if you write things out so I can point to them whenever we discuss so that you know more or less where things are. Uh, unfortunately, the only whiteboard I have is a vertical one, not horizontal. So we're going to have to squeeze a bit on spacing. I'm going to use abbreviations and initials rather than using full name because there's not enough space to write everything here. And I hope you can see it clearly. Um, if you can't, just remember the placement of the names because that's the most important thing. We are trying to establish a clear relationship on this whiteboard. So it's easier for me to talk about the event that happened and what other people claim and whether or not that's likely to happen or not. All right, so firstly, what we do know for certain is that Yang Luchang was the first person to make Taiji known in public in the imperial city. So although there are people who heard and know of Chen Changxing, right, who's Yang Luchan's teacher, they know of his martial ability. It is not famous in the broader sense, right? Yang Luchan was the one who really made Taiji stand out on the spot. There's also there's actually a saying in China that goes um, something along that you know, Chen Village taught the style, but Yang Luchan made it famous. So you can see the influence of Yang. So, and we know for certain that Yang was a master of Taiji. He came to Beijing and made a name for himself and was undefeated. Uh, we talk about this in the last episode, so if you haven't watched that, you can check that out for some background knowledge. So for a baseline, I'm going to first put Yang Luchan in the middle, because that is a certainty that we know for sure. So we're going to write here, Yang. Excuse my handwriting, it's pretty bad, but uh, yeah, I can't really help it. L and C for Lu Chan. Okay, so Yang Lu Chan, he is, hope you can see that. So he is the baseline we have. He made Taiji famous, he was the first public known Taiji master and who taught Taiji. And note that I don't say he's a 
he told Youngstar Taiji because at the time where he was around, there was no such such thing as Youngstar, Wu Star, Sun Star. That differentiation came later on, right? To the actually it was during the third generation where the Wu family started to teach public as well. Up to which point they, they realized there's a need to differentiate between Hu's family's version of Tai Chi. And so during the third generation, they started doing Yang style, Wu style, eventually Sun style. But during Yang Lu Chan's own period, it was just Tai Chi and he taught it. Although he taught Wu Yuxiang and Wu Quanyou, both of, both of them promised not to teach outsiders in order to not compete against Yang Lu Chan for market, right? They respect Yang Lu Chan so much that they want him to get all the business. All right, so as we established in the last episode, Yang Lu Chan learned it from his master, which is Chen Changxing from the Chen village. So I'm going to write Chen Changxing over here. Now my handwriting is really bad, so... Chen Changxing. So he taught Yang Lu Chan. That we do know 100% for certainty. And Yang Lu Chan came back eventually to Yongyang County and he taught Wu Yuxiang who sponsored or funded his lost trip. He made three trips to the Chen village. In the span of 18 years, the lost trip was sponsored by Wu Yuxiang. And as a, as the return of the favor, Yang Lu Chan agreed to teach Wu Yuxiang. So we're gonna write Wu Yuxiang over here. So Yang Lu Chan taught Wu Yuxiang. Now Wu Yuxiang eventually he promised Yang Luchang to not teach outsiders, so he only taught his nephew, who is known as Li Yi Yu, double Y. So Wu Yuxiang taught Li Yi Yu, alright? And later on, Li Yi Yu taught another member called Hao Wei Zhen. We're going to write that just in case we need it, but we're not going to talk about that right now. So he taught Hao Wei Zhen, who then eventually taught Sun Lu Tang, which gave a branch out to Sun Style Tai Chi. All right, uh, I don't think you can see, but we have Sun Style Tai Chi somewhere in the bottom. If we ever need it, we'll come to that. Okay, Yang Chan was introduced by Wu Yixiang and his brother to go to the Imperial City. Over there, he met with Wu Quanyou. Okay, note that Wu Yuxiang, Wu Quanyou sound like they have the same surname, but it's not the same character in Chinese. Wu Yuxiang's Wu is the third sound. So if I uh, accentuate it, it's called Wu. And Wu Quanyou is actually second sound, because Wu. So those are two completely different characters, just sound similar in English. So he also then taught Wu Quanyou. Wu Quanyou. Wu Quanyou was a Manchurian, and he was... And he has a position in the military, I can't remember what exactly, but he works for the Qing government. And he then taught his own son, I'm gonna write over here, which is Wu Jianquan. So also Wu Jianquan. And here is where they eventually started differentiating between Wu style Tai Chi and Yang style Tai Chi because Wu Jianquan started to teach to public. So although the Wu family started with Wu Quanyou, strictly speaking, Wu Jianquan is the founder of Wu family Tai Chi because Wu Quanyou stole the Yang family Tai Chi, so to speak, or just Tai Chi at that time. There was no differentiation. And Wu Quanyou did not declare a new lineage called Wu family Tai Chi. So that happened with his son. So strictly speaking, although his son's Tai Chi came from Wu Quanyou, his son is actually the founder, not his father. All right, so now that we established this, we're gonna talk another bit of a history that some of you might not know. So even though Yang Lu Chan agreed to teach Wu Yuxiang because Wu Yuxiang funded him on his last trip. However, for some unknown reason, Wu Yuxiang eventually suspected that, that Yang Lu Chan was holding something back. Now, we don't know for sure if he really did hold something back. I mean, it could happen because uh, Yang family is famous for being very secretive about their martial art. Even when they went to the imperial city, 
and they start teaching people, they were quite selective and quite secretive. I mean, Yang Luqiang only had a few students, and they, all of them are are important people in the city, such as the prince. There was also a military general. There was like a butler of a of an important person. So they were all like important people. Uh, but even his son, right, Yang Jianhou, he taught people in public, and he also taught people in private. And those people he taught in public, he often was held information. So maybe we'll have another episode talking about the secrecy of Yang family separately. But for now, just know that the Yang family is not very forthcoming with their knowledge, which is quite understandable because back in those days, that is their trade secret, right? It's what they're making a living out of. It's just like uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken will not you know, expose their secret recipe if they ever have one, or Coca-Cola is not going to expose their formula. In the, in the same sense, the Yang family don't want everyone to know the secret to their martial art because if they do, they have more competition and they will, you know, they will risk to lose their position in the martial world and make less money. So it is like it is possible that Yang Luqiang was held some information or some cr crucial knowledge to Wu Yixiang. We don't actually know that because uh, no one actually talk about this in the open, and it's simply too long ago for anyone to really know anything for certain about it, but it is very likely to happen. And this doesn't just happen in the Taiji um, world, right? It happens with every other Chinese martial art. All Chinese martial arts have this thing where they want to keep things secret only to a select few disciples. They, the, a master can have a hundred disciples, but he only, only teach five or six the full content of his knowledge. The rest will teach bits and pieces. Anyway, so another theory is that Wu Yixiang simply didn't train enough, right? There's another side to this is that if you learn Tai Chi, someone, a master can teach all the knowledge, you still can't do it. And when you can't do it, it feels almost like the master isn't teaching you correctly. It sometimes takes a lot of accumulation of training, which can take up to years before you actually can do something. So it could also be that. We don't actually know for sure. But for whatever reason it was, Wu Yixiang found the need to go and find Chen Changxing, right, Yang Luqiang's master, and seek help there. So that is something we know for certain. We don't know why he went there, whether Yang Luqiang was keeping secret, or whether Wu, Wu Yixiang just simply didn't train enough, we don't know. I tend to lean toward Yang Luqiang keeping secret, but I can't say 100% because there's no way to find that out anymore. But either way, what's important is that Wu Yixiang went to Chen Changxing, with the, I think he did tell Yang Luqiang about it, and Yang Luqiang obviously probably isn't happy about it, but he can't say no because they are friends, and Wu Yixiang helped Yang Luqiang to, to make a fame, you know, to make him to make a name in the imperial city and to make quite a lot of money and you know, a very important social position. So maybe Yang Luqiang wasn't happy about it, but he can't really stop Wu Yixiang from doing it because he kind of owe a lot to Wu Yixiang. So he made an introduction, wrote a, a, a letter of introduction, and Wu Yixiang took it and went to the Chen village to find Chen Changxing. Now there are two theories to what happens later. Well, what happens here, one is that Chen Changxing was already dead. We don't actually know for sure if that really happened. Another is that Chen Changxing refuses to teach him because he was too old or he was ill. We don't know the condition, but what we do know is that Wu Yixiang went to Chen Changxing at Chen village and, Wu, and Chen Changxing did not teach him. Instead, of finding someone else in the village to teach him, Chen Changxing referred or whoever is in his place if he was already passed away at the time, we don't know. But, but someone either Chen Changxing or his family referred Wu Yixiang to a neighboring village called Zhao Bao. Right, so this is a Chen village and there's another village close by called Zhao Bao village. So they referred Wu Yixiang to Zhao Bao village looking for another Chen family member called Chen Qingping. We're gonna write that here. So it's also of the same surname, Chen Qingping. Okay. So Chen Qingping, which basically was the Taiji, well, the, the master, we don't actually know if it's the style has called Taiji at the time. So we just say Chen Qingping is a martial master of the Zhao Bao village. And Wu Yixiang visited him, spent about three months there and supposedly patched up whatever he was missing and his skill supposedly was finally complete. After three months of training with Chen Jinping at Zhaobao village, Wu Yixiang came back. Now here is a very interesting myth. During his trip back to 
with its Yongnian Xian or Beijing, we know sure. But during his trip back from Zhaobao village, he came across a salt shop, right? So basically, it's a shop that sells salt. Back then, salt is quite a commodity. And according to the story, while he was visiting the salt village, I mean the salt shop, maybe to take a break from the trip or to buy something, I don't know. He somehow uncovered a piece of classical text. And this text so happened to be the text that we know today as the Taiji classic, okay? Taiji Quan Lun. And this text supposedly was written by a man called Wang Zongyue. So just gonna quickly uh, writing here for easy reference. So now, um, so Wu Yixiang discovered the Tai Ji classic, okay? And then he bought this classic back to Yang Lu-chan, and that's how now the Yang family and the Wu family, and eventually Wu Quan Yu said they all have this Taiji classic written by, Wu Zhu, uh, by Wang Zongyue. So this, the reason I call this a story or a myth is because it sounds too coincidental to be reality. Okay, so basically if you think about it, he visited a random salt shop and somehow uncovered a, a piece of secret text that, you know, supposed to help them at their training. It's too much like a novel. And there are no real solid evidence as to this exactly happened the way it happened. You know, there are people who believe that maybe Chen Qingping gave him the text. Um, kind of un unlikely. I mean, the argument for that is that maybe Chen Qingping gave him the text, but Chen Qingping don't want to upset his own village for giving an outsider the secret text. And therefore, Wu Yixiang have to make a, a story up that, you know, the text came from somewhere else. However, okay, we need to realize that Zhaobao village and Chen village, they were like very close by neighboring village and they intermarry. Because well, obviously if you, you know, if you keep the same village with the same surname and you keep marrying it with yourself, it's like in incest. So they marry to a neighboring village and that's how Chen Qingping actually migrated. He was actually from Chen village. He migrated to the neighboring village. So, but they are very close, right? They have, they have family ties. So if Chen Jinping had this Taiji classic by Wang Zongyue, I see no reason why Chen Changxing side would not have this text. But the truth is they did not have this text, right? When, when Chen Changxing's descendant, which is Chen Fake, right, he's the first Chen master to come to Beijing. When he came to Beijing, he does not have the Taiji classic text by Wang Zongyue. And there are also people who went to do research at the Chen village they also state the same that the Chen village does not have the Taiji classic by Wang Zongyue. They have their own family classic, which is written by, supposedly is written by um, Chen Wangting. We don't know that, but we're going to discuss it at a later stage. But they do not have the Taiji classic. So it doesn't really make sense if Zhaobao village has a text, they are intermarrying family tied villages you know, and they do the same martial arts, but Chen Beli does not have the text. So I don't believe Chen Qingping gave that text to Wu Yuxiang. Which left the, the possibility that Wu Yuxiang did discover that text in the Salt Village by accident. I mean, freak accident does happen in reality. Not very likely and not very common, but it can't say that it will absolutely never happen. So there is a small chance that that story is true. Another one, is that the text came from another place and there's even series that Wu Yixiang wrote the text himself but I can't really comment on that it's pure speculation there's not enough evidence to suggest exactly where that text come from alright now this is basically what I wish to establish as the baseline of event that happened alright and from here we're gonna examine each of the claim to be the origin of Taiji and see how likely that is or unlikely it is to happen. All right, so upon completing the video, I realized that, you know, even for the first part, the video was a bit too long. So I'm going to split to two parts. Part one, we're just going to establish the foundation, the baseline, and the event that we do know for certain that happened. And in the next part, we're going to examine the first and perhaps the most popular claim to the founding of Taiji, which is 
by the mystical figure Zhang San Feng. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please you know subscribe to my channel, and if you can, please support me on Patreon. That will allow me to produce more quality content on a more frequent basis. And of course, hope all of you will stay safe. You know, stay away from crowds, and keep patient and what's about you during this crisis. Hope everyone is safe and healthy, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the Triassens Martial Art Channel.